Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. They say the charges just don't fit the crime. It's very painful. Um, we, I personally relive the accident in my dreams very frequently, very emotional. Family of a 13-year-old girl killed in a horrible crash wants answers, and tonight the prosecutor's office is responding. Thanks for being with us for Local 4 News at 5. I'm Devin Skillion. I'm Kimberly Gill. 13-year-old Piper Carruthers died in March of on her way home from skating practice in Walled Lake. The Oakland County prosecutor charged a 15-year-old driver with running from the scene and from cops. Well, now for the first time, Piper's parents are talking about the crash that killed their daughter and injured other family members, and they are openly criticizing the charging decision in the case. Rob Maloney live tonight with his exclusive interview. Rob, the prosecutor's office is also responding. Indeed they are, and this was a tragic accident that sent half a dozen cars careening in an intersection like pinballs, injuring four people. Piper, 13 years old, pass away. But this situation became infinitely more difficult because the grieving parents have decided that they think that this is a case that was undercharged. Wall Lake Police dash cam video shows a Jeep Gladiator take a left-hand turn, jumping the red light eastbound on east-west Maple near Decker. The officer gives chase and calls it off as the Jeep gets too far away. It kept speeding, jumped another red light, slamming at a high rate of speed into multiple vehicles. The first thing I realized was the airbags were off and I was spinning. Erica Carruthers drove this red Honda Fit home from ice skating practice, blindsided with her two daughters in the back seats. Ten-year-old Cora launched from the vehicle, landing on the pavement with terrible head and neck injuries. Erica called 911 then only to see her 13-year-old Piper sitting limp and trapped in the back passenger seat. She didn't look great at the time, but, you know, when they're telling you she's still breathing, you still have hope, right? Hope was not enough. First responders rushed Piper to Henry Ford Hospital in West Bloomfield, her dad Bill arriving just ahead of her ambulance, watching in horror as doctors feverishly tried to save her. Once... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it was confirmed that she wasn't going to survive. You're, you're, uh, you turn to the next child that is in your need. After weeks of extensive medical care and surgery, both Cora and Erica will likely recover physically, emotionally. I personally relive the accident in my dreams very frequently. Wald Lake police say two young men, 19-year-old Gavin Kassab of Commerce Township, rode in the passenger seat while an unidentified 15-year-old from West Bloomfield drove the Jeep. And after the accident, both men ran away. Kassab facing felony fleeing and eluding, along with misdemeanor leaving the scene of an injury accident. The 15-year-old driver is charged as a juvenile with the same crimes and could possibly not receive any jail time at all. Erica and Bill are deeply disappointed. They believe the charges are entirely too mild. I don't think either of us want to see him at 20 be able to be clear of this. My daughter isn't coming out of her urn in, in, in four or five years. She's in there forever. Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald does have the discretion to charge the juvenile as an adult. And after speaking with the Carruthers family today, Williams is now saying... So we received some new information uh, that, that the prosecutor didn't have when we made the initial decision. And um, she wants to take the time to take a very careful look at that and see if, in fact, we should add charges uh, and, and whether there's any other steps we need to take because we need to do the right thing. David Williams also told me that, you know, there is this concern about whether manslaughter should have been the charge. And he says that the fleeing and looting uh, first degree that they have charged these two young men with comes with the same penalty, at least as a felony, an adult felony, uh, as a manslaughter case. So he says that was a concern uh, that the Carruthers had. And he says that it's exactly the same in terms of penalty. Uh, Rod, talk about the courtroom visits for these teens. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Uh, so far, the unidentified 15-year-old remains in the children's village, as we understand yeah. it. But uh, Gavin, Gavin Kassab was in the courtroom today, and a judge decided that the $250,000 bond that he had, along with another case that he has uh, locally in uh, one of the uh, cities that he was charged in now, must remain under house arrest uh. with a tether on his ankle and uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar bonds remains in place well, obviously really curious to know more about these uh, new revelations for the prosecutor to follow all right rod let's turn now to new information that we're learning about a double shooting that took the life of a 16 year old this happened early this morning on griggs street not far from the intersection of west eight mile and wyoming sean lay is live on this story sean what's the family saying about this spoke to the grandmother of the 16 year old who was shot and killed and tonight she has a plea kimberly for every teenager across our area saying stay home stay out of the streets this area of northwest detroit is in the detroit police 12th precinct a double shooting last night and young people like brett hawkins say they're aware of the gun violence and try to steer clear of it stay to yourself don't don't talk too much don't be in everybody's face that's how you stay safe just after 11 last night in this very area reports of a shooting one man taken to the hospital police chasing that gunman on foot and doorbell camera footage showing an ems and dpd cruiser arriving at the corner of griggs and chippewa they see another shooting victim listen closely ems left the scene we have another dsw we need another transport unit that victim did not survive and was just a teen. Family members of 16-year-old Sir Spiller tell us he was found with a gunshot wound to his head. His grandmother crying out to the community. Sir Spiller, he was 16 years old and he was shot in the head out here in the streets of Detroit. I want to say to all you young, young people, these streets don't love you. Be with your family and be at home. Go to school if you're a kid. These streets don't love you. Back here live, checked with Detroit police just a few moments ago. So far, no arrests, no witnesses, and no motive for this shooting and killing of the 16-year-old along with the adult that he is apparently lit with. And Kimberly and Devin police say it's a challenging case because the shooting scene stretches out over several blocks. They continue to investigate. We're live on the west side tonight. Sean Lee, local force. Senseless. Okay, Sean, thanks. Uh, only one lane of southbound US 23 is back open at this hour in York Township after a wrong way crash. Seems like we've had a lot of those lately. A wrong way crash that sent four people to the hospital this morning. Uh, police say the 38 year old Plymouth man was driving north in the southbound lanes on US 23 in Dundee, hit several cars but kept going into Washtenaw County, hitting four cars near Willis Road in York Township. Four people, including the driver, had to be taken to the hospital. It's expected all of them are going to survive. Police do believe the driver was either drinking or under the influence of drugs. Well, tomorrow marks one year since a gunman opened fire inside Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. 19 students and two teachers killed as the community now comes together to honor the victims, though there's still so many questions and a lot of anger over what happened. Wendy Woolfolk is in Uvalde with the latest. Wendy. After 12 months, there is still a lot of anger and frustration because of the lack of answers out of that independent investigation that's still ongoing. And in that vacuum of information, there's not a lot of healing taking place here. Well, our hearts are still broken. We are still grieving. Prayers for the overwhelming pain that is still so raw in Uvalde almost one year later. You know, this is something that we live with not even just every day, every second. You know, and just imagine everything you love getting ripped from you. After 12 agonizing months, no answers and no accountability for the families of 19 students and two teachers who were massacred by an 18 year old with an assault weapon inside Robb Elementary. Everybody that was there that day has to be held accountable. Every agency that was there, and in, 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 in my, this is my opinion. It's, a, it's been a bunch of BS. Some families turning their anguish into action, urging state lawmakers to raise the legal age to purchase an assault rifle from 18 to 21. You see, if the age limit would have been 21, my daughter, 18 of her friends, and two of her teachers would still be alive today. 
but that bill didn't make it to the House floor, deepening their frustrations and adding to their unimaginable grief. There's no moving on. There's not, I'm stuck on that day and I will forever be stuck on that day. May 24th, 2022, a day that changed this small town forever. This memorial here in the town plaza is still a place where people come to gather and to remember. Meantime, the victims' families are vowing to continue their fight to find change and answers. In Uvalde, Wendy Wolfolk, Local 4. All right, Wendy, tomorrow night, families of the victims are going to be holding a candlelight vigil. All right, now to the weather, and let's take a live look at pictures from Sky 4. It is another really nice day all across Metro Detroit. Yep, still just a little bit of that haze that we've been seeing in the sky mm -hmm. lately, but making our way through a really nice stretch here as we head toward a holiday weekend. Let's get over to Kim Adams and our first look at the 41 forecast, Kim. Well, if you haven't heard, that haze is actually smoke blowing from can uh, some wildfires that are in Canada. They started in Alberta, now making their way a little south. And so that's why we've had that haze in the air, and it does create a really interesting sunset. We'll have one more of those sunsets tonight with the haze and one more sunrise, and then a cold front's going to clear out all that smoke. So 80 degrees, and it's in the upper levels. That's why you don't smell it. 80 degrees in Detroit, 77 in Holland, Pontiac, 81 right now in Adrian. This evening, temperatures not falling off a whole lot. We'll be in the mid-60s by midnight tonight. And then tomorrow, we top out at 70 early, falling off, though, in the afternoon. And that's when some much colder air sets in. And we'll talk about whether or not it will affect your weekend plans.